আপনাদের সকলকে আমি আবারও আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি আজকে ক্রিমিনাল ল বিষয়ক আইনি অনুষ্ঠান ক্রিমিনাল জাস্টিস প্রোগ্রাম দেখবার জন্য আমি আজাম এন্ড কোসলিস্টার্সের প্রিন্সিপাল সলিস্টার শাফিউল আজম এবং আমার সাথে আছেন সে আপনারা অনেক দেখেছেন আমার কলিগ সেই দীর্ঘ পঁচিশ বছরের অভিজ্ঞতা সম্পন্ন ব্যারিস্টার ব্যারিস্টার লিন টাউনলি উনি কোর্টে জাজ হিসাবেও বসেন বিগত জীবনে উনি পুলিশের যে ক্রাউন প্রসিকিউশন সার্ভিস আছে সেটার ম্যানেজার হিসাবে কাজ করেছিলেন উনি যারা লন্ডন ইউনিভার্সিটিতে ব্যারিস্টারি পড়াশোনা করে তাদেরকে পড়ান বা প্রফেশনাল ট্রেনিং কোর্স যেটা বলা হয় এবং তার আরেকটা পরিচয় হল উনি এ দেশের যে উইম্যান ব্যারিস্টার অ্যাসোসিয়েশন আছে কোল ইউকের উনি প্রেসিডেন্ট আমি এবং আমার কলিগ ব্যারিস্টার লিন টাউনলি আমরা সেই একটা ভয়াবহ সে বিশাল যে কেস এ দেশের মধ্যে প্রচুর পাবলিসিটি প্রচুর নিউজ মিডিয়ার মধ্যে প্রচারিত হয়েছে নর্থ ওয়েলস কেয়ার হোম অ্যাবিউস কেস হিস্টোরিক্যাল অ্যাবিউস হোয়াট ইজ দ্য হিস্টোরিক্যাল অ্যাবিউস এটা কি হিস্টোরিক্যাল অ্যাবিউস কেন বলা হয় নন ডিসেন্ট চাইল্ড অ্যাবিউস সামটাইমস কলড হিস্টোরিক্যাল অ্যাবিউস is when an adult was abused as a child or a young person under the age of 18, whether the abuse happened once or hundreds of times, a year or many years ago. Khub shundar ami abna ke ita ke tu koyekta sentence break down kore the word chesta gor boye hon. এই হিস্টোরিক্যাল এলিগেশন অফ সেক্সুয়াল অ্যাবিউসটা হচ্ছে নন রিসেন্ট সাম্প্রতিকের না অসাম্প্রতিক অনেক পুরনো পুরনো কয়েক বছরের পুরনো হতে পারে সেটা মেনি ইয়ার্স সেভেন্টি সিক্সটি ইয়ার্সের পুরনো হতে পারে যখন চাইল্ডকে অ্যাবিউজ করা হয়েছিল তরুণ থাকা অবস্থায় এবং যখন তার বয়স ছিল আঠারোর কম এবং তখন তাকে অ্যাবিউজ করা হয়েছিল এখন সে অ্যাডাল্ট এটাই হচ্ছে হিস্টোরিক্যাল অ্যাবিউজ মিন করে অর্থ করে অনেকে আমাকে বলছে কি যে আজম সাহেব এই যে কেসটা আসলো এটা তো বারো বছরের পুরানো কেস তার বয়স হয়ে গেছে এখন পঁচিশ বছর এগুলো ঘটনা সেগুলো যেগুলো বলতেছে দশ বছর বয়স থাকা অবস্থায় তার এগুলো স্মরণে আছে কিনা সে সত্য কথা বলতেছে কিনা এগুলো টাইমের কোনো ব্যারিয়ার নাই সে কি সত্য বলতেছে নাকি মিথ্যা বলতেছে সেটা প্রমাণ করতে হবে কোর্টের মধ্যে হোয়াট ইজ দ্য ডেফিনেশন অফ সেক্সুয়াল অ্যাবিউস সেক্সুয়াল অ্যাবিউসটা কি এটা হচ্ছে Unwanted sexual activity, অবাঞ্ছিত sexual activity with perpetrators using force, making threats or taking advantage of victims not able to give consent. A perpetrator, অপরাধীরা force use করেছিল অথবা threat করেছিল করেছে অথবা সুবিধা দিয়েছিল এই যে ভিক্টিমদের এইজের উপরে কারণ তাদের এজ ছিল খুবই অল্প বয়স এবং তাদের সম্মতি দেওয়ার কনসেন্ট দেওয়ার কোন এজ তখন ছিল না এগুলোর সুযোগ সুবিধা নিয়ে একটা আনওয়ান্টেড সেক্সুয়াল অ্যাক্টিভিটিতে চিলড্রেনকে এনগেজ করেছিল রেপ হতে পারে এবং আরো ডিফারেন্ট টাইপস অফ সেক্সুয়াল অ্যাসল্ট হইতে পারে লিন লেট মি পুট ইউ টু দিস এ ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড অফ দিস কেস এগেইন দ্য নর্থ ওয়েলস কেয়ার হোম কেস 
Now, tell me about the how long these operations and then investigations police been working and how many police forces worked on this operation? Well, I mean, I, d I don't know the numbers, um, Shafi, but there was a number of police forces involved and a number of different um, investigations going on. Um, and, uh, I, I mean, as I've said before, a number of investigations over the years, um, internal, external, and then um, uh, government-ordered investigations as well. So I, d I don't know the exact number of officers that were involved but it would have been large numbers um, uh, speaking to a number of victims, about hundreds uh, and hundreds of different allegations. So a lot of police time um, and investigation time for at the end of the day, I think what, what we can just, we can only say this, that it was the tip of a much larger iceberg going on um, underneath when you consider how difficult it is to actually mount um, a successful prosecution uh, yes. at the end of the day. The, the, the one of the care home, I think it's called the Brian Eskin, that was the main place for the person who was given long sentence. Yes, he was the uh, person in charge um, of that home. And uh, that was where the serious, the, the allegations of rape, although it wasn't called uh, rape at the time, it was it, it was um, worded differently in the in the uh, legislation that was um, that was in force at the time. But it, it would be called rape today, um, and, and and rape of uh, a number of young boys. So that was the most serious um, allegation of the offending, and. Um, in relation to that individual, and again, this uh, taken in today's context, um, he actually lived in the home all the time. Um, he uh, That was his home as well. He ran the home, he lived there, and um, what the reports uh, said or found about him was that the only time he ever actually left the premises was when he went out to play golf. The rest of the time he lived in the home 24 seven. Um, so, you know, that gave him opportunity to act unsupervised in a situation that simply wouldn't be allowed to happen today. And he uh, called about 14 boys, group of 14 boys together in his flat. Yes, and, and uh, then there were various allegations of it was sexual abuse going on with him and uh, particular boys that he'd chosen to sexually abuse. Now, one boy was making this remark, which I want to read, and the viewers can also understand, and then you can explain a bit more. Uh, the Brian S. King was the coldest of residential, called it of residential. If you never rock the boat, you are left alone, one said. Do you yeah. have anything to say on this? Well, what, I mean, what the, what, what the boys were, were saying, I mean, clearly um, referring to a, a prison that you never really managed to escape from. And it links in with the other way it's been described as a world within a world. So essentially, the boys were being abused and, you know, there was nowhere that they could go to. Um, they were cut off from society because the way that the homes were run and managed was that any schooling that they had was supposed to take place in the home, a very unusual situation. Everything happened within the home and they had very limited... Um, contact with the outside world. Yeah, you see, the another guy, boy, say, the worst thing is, this was the world within a world. There was no escape. You had to choose a way to survive. It was literally surviving. Yes, well, I mean, essentially, and again, um, 
we don't have places that are allowed to operate like this today um, where all the schooling, everything, all, all that the boys were doing all took place within the home and essentially the person in charge of the home um, had had the final say over everything and was not accountable to anyone. So if things were happening that were going wrong, there was no one there to investigate. And in the, uh, as I've mentioned before, in the climate of those days, um, even if an allegation were to be made, which obviously the boys didn't feel that they could, because um, their reality was that that within that home was their whole world and um, they knew how the power structure lay so they were afraid to make the allegations in the first place because there would have been consequences but it's 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 unlikely that uh, you know boys from a troubled background who were put there because they couldn't be controlled anywhere else um, or at least um, that was the label that had been put on them rightly or wrongly you know that they were troublesome in the system it's, it would be very difficult um, for them to make an allegation in the first place, but even less likely they would have been believed. So even if they had made the allegations, um, it's likely that they would have been deemed to have been lying to get attention or, or lying because they were troublesome in the first place. So they were in a, in a situation where they couldn't, they simply couldn't win. And all of this only came out um, after the passage of a long, long, many years and period of time when societal um, attitudes changed. And it also, um, things began to come out about homes within the care system all over the UK. So not just in Wales. And it was the UK and also Ireland that there was this ongoing um, abuse going on within the, the care system. Um, a lot of it had been devolved outside of the state to the church as well. So it, it coincided with a sudden revelation of what was what was going on because victims felt empowered to talk. Um, people took up their, their causes and basically there was a sea change in attitude and uh, it, it started to be realised at, at government level and at other levels that this type of thing had been going on and had been going on unchecked um, because the system had enabled it for a, a long number of years. And we will just, I mean, the bottom line is we simply won't know how many victims or individuals were affected. or, or so, were many, so many of these uh, inquiries and investigations and operations that before the Paliel uh, operation, I think there was an inquiry called Jillings Inquiry. Well, as I said, there's been a number of different inquiries, um, uh, different names. I mean, police operations are just randomly uh, named. Um, they don't have any significance other than uh, than a random name in which they set up their team. Um, but there were, there were a number of police inquiries and there was also internal inquiries as well that were made within the care system and uh, then the inquiry that was set up in 1997 um, by uh, by the uh, the Welsh uh, secretary at that time so there's been different levels of inquiries and uh, and uh, you know this was how all the all of the stuff the 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 material that had happened what had happened the details of what had happened where yeah. and who was responsible all came to light as a result of all the different inquiries and police investigations that were ongoing. Also, Lynn, uh, the before 2015, the five people being uh, convicted and sentenced in September, there were other people I can see. In uh, 1991, one was given for 12 years, and then another one uh, in 1994 for seven years, and in 1995, another one was six years. So th this has been going on for many, many years. Yes, well, I mean, that's, uh, it, it, it dates back to the early 90s, but the main, the main um, convictions and the, the publicity, as it were, was around the mold case. 
Um, and again, th that's because that was the most serious of abuse and it involved um, the, the largest number of victims that had gone through court. Um, so, you know, there have been allegations over the years coming through, but um, it's really only recently, I think, um, as a result of the 1997 inquiry, that um, the the vast uh, the vast um, nature of the abuse came was coming to light. Yeah, and there was another inquiry also. It was called the Waterhouse inquiry. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, there are many inquiries, many many inquiries. Yeah, but many it's all police. yeah, yeah, all again um, as a result of all of them, um, the the nature of of the abuse um, and where it was happening came to light as, as a result of many of the inquiries, and it was happening all across um, the UK. So it wasn't just in Wales; there were other inquiries ongoing. It was the UK, and it was also in in Ireland uh, yeah. as well. Yeah, and then uh, that Waterhouse uh, Judicial Inquiry, that is the one set up by the William Hague, and then alleged child abuse in care homes in North Wales is set for more than 200 days, taking evidence from 650 witnesses. And its report, Lost in Care, published in 2000. So is very substantial resources and then money has been spent by the government for this investigation. Yes, well, they have to be because um, they were, I mean, it wasn't just individuals, it was allowed to happen within the care system. Yeah. It's very, very serious. Um, and that that is why the government had to spend resources because it wasn't just the fact that it was it was historic but that, that didn't make it any less serious. In fact, it, it made it worse because what it exposed was that the system that was in place to care for the most vulnerable in society had in fact allowed this type of abuse to go on um, and actually um, made it um, possible. So it systemically um, bolstered up a regime that permitted this type of abuse to continue unchecked over many, many years. Um, and many people who were involved and were responsible are never going to be brought to justice. Um, many have died. Um, many have moved on and, and are maybe not traceable. And, and also many, you know, many will never be named because, um, th because those who they abused simply um, were, were either too scared to name them or, yeah. um, or w weren't able to identify perhaps who their, their actual abuser Talking about individuals who will be very traumatized yeah. uh, by what happened to them. Yeah. The victim was a victim. একজন ছিল ওই যে রেক্সাম কাউন্সিলর সে আপনার এগাই আসছে কমপ্লেইন করার জন্য সেও ওই কেয়ার হোমের মধ্যে ছিল যখন সে চাইল্ড হুড ছিল এবং সেও ভিকটিম ছিল সেও পুলিশের কাছে এগাই আসছে রিপোর্ট করার জন্য আজ আমাদের সময় শেষ হয়ে গেছে আজকের এই প্রোগ্রাম আমরা সবকিছু শেষ করতে পারি নাই এই বিশাল কেসের অনেকগুলো কথা বলার ছিল কারণ সময়ের অভাবে আমরা শুরুতে একটু লেট হয়ে গেছে আমাদের বিভিন্ন একটু মানে টেকনিক্যাল অসুবিধার জন্য আজকের প্রোগ্রামটা আপনারা কালকে আবার দেখতে পারবেন সকাল সাড়ে নয়টা থেকে এগারোটা পর্যন্ত তাছাড়া অ্যান্টিভি ইউরোপের ফেসবুক এবং ইউটিউবে লগ ইন করলেও আপনারা এই প্রোগ্রামের লিঙ্ক পাবেন সলিস্টার শাফিউল আজাম আজাম এন্ড কো সলিস্টার্স এই নামে গুগল সার্চ করলেও এই প্রোগ্রামগুলো আপনারা দেখতে পারবেন সবাই ভালো থাকুন সুস্থ থাকুন এবং সকলের প্রতি আমার শুভকামনা থাকলো আসসালামু আলাইকুম